there's a new PlayStation 5 in town. It goes by the name of Slim. And word is, town's just not big enough for two. Time for this guy to ride off into the sunset. For the uninitiated, the PlayStation 5 doesn't look much different. Certainly not enough to be called slim, but it does have some nice styling and updated ports for the era of USB-C supremacy. As usual, thanks to Creative Electron for these great X-ray images. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of this big fan. Despite the slim form factor, the new PS5 still has side panels that you can remove tool-free, proving once again that slim doesn't mean unrepairable while also proving that repairability and profitability go hand in hand. You can tell Sony's designers want people to be peeling these off. As a bonus, those icons double as reassembly guides. The optical drive panel is the one with the circle, which feels fitting. They put cute little PlayStation button icons in here, both large and small. Speaking of optical drives, you can pop it out tool-free too. No cables in sight. In a far cry from the standard console maker stance that optical drives must be locked down to prevent piracy, Sony finally seems to be seeing the light. Of course, there are some restrictions. Swapping out your disk drive requires an internet connection and does require registering it. But the procedure is almost as painless as plugging in a flash drive. Thumb drive? Pen drive? USB stick? You know what I mean, right? We're not that old yet. Now, Sony doesn't offer optical drives just yet, and this procedure could use a manual if I'm being honest, but it's going a long way towards making things more repairable. Markings like these arrows show a true intent to aid repair. We love to see it. The expandable storage slot is nearly as accessible, and its screw is decorated too. Aww. We don't have a drive in here yet, but when we're ready to expand, we've got a veritable bevy of M.2 SSD options, each with a labeled screw slot. They definitely don't expect you to replace this fan yourself. Torque screws, and sure enough, we've got a sticker panel covering the fan connector. After that, the fan slides right out, but maintenance should be a lot easier for this key part. And the hits keep coming. While this tamper evidence sticker doesn't directly violate the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, what does Sony care if we remove a piece of tape? Our anti-repair senses are tingling. Interestingly, some of the screw holes in here are labeled in some kind of arcane code. It doesn't have anything to do with the components they secure, but as it turns out, they do indicate the length of the screws. Two dots long, one dot short. Again, repair manuals make this a lot easier to figure out, but I do appreciate that Sony is trying to help fixers reassemble their consoles damage-free. Like, I guess this is the radiator portion, so it doesn't necessarily need to sink the heat into this panel, but the lack of contact just feels weird. Bye-bye antenna connectors, connector plate, and after a bit of fiddling with this familiar and frustrating connector, bye-bye port cable. 400 billion screws later. Okay, it's only 32, but it feels like we've been unscrewing for a million years. And we're finally ready to remove this board assembly. The board plugs into the power supply with a pronged, fuss-free connector, which is nice, so long as you don't bend the things when you remove the board. From here, the huge heat sinking panels look intimidating, but they only require careful prying to remove. Look at all those sticky thermal chunks. Big ol' heat sink bar here, and a smaller one beneath. Some more screws, and the board is free. And so is the liquid metal. This stuff is so cool, just look at it. Now that is some space age cooling. For the board itself, it's a board all right. Replaceable CMOS battery, yay. Soldered on ports, meh. Plus a tasty array of chips with hefty processor dead center. The power supply is a nice squarish block this time, and the central panel pops right off. The front ports are replaceable along with their board, which makes for a nice palate cleanser as a send-off. This year has been a stunning series of wins for the right to repair, but sometimes the quieter march towards progress gets lost in the fanfare. The PlayStation 5 Slim is a great example of hardware engineers and product designers taking repairability to heart. Tool-free disassembly, case-bolded labels and reassembly notes, plus flexible, upgradable storage all core tenants of repairable design. With laws protecting repair falling into place, I'm sure designs like these will be rescued from repair restrictive practices like parts pairing. So to those working towards a fixable future, cheers and game on.